were doing in section 7.4, you had a lot of new vocabulary, and a few of you mentioned that, um, you know, the, the amount of vocabulary words that you had. And of course, today I'm just going to add more in there. Um, so I want to make sure you have these straightened out, okay? It says, suppose the vector v has an initial point of negative 1, 3, and a terminal point of 4, 1. Okay, so that means to the left 1 and up 3, and to the right 4 and up 1. This is the vector, and it would go like that. It'd have a dot at the, the initial point, and it would have an arrow at the terminal end. Okay, so if you wanted to graph it, that right there is vector PQ. But we're renaming it vector V into a position vector. Okay, the position vector is going to look like this, but it's not going to be in that same location. But what we could do in order to find this is we could add the P and Q X's together and get, what, three? Add the 3 and the 1 together, the y values together, and get 4. And this here is vector v, and I'm Ital or bolding that, is vector v. So if I graph vector v, I go to the right 3 and up 4. Wait, negative 1, 3, 4, 1, negative 1, 2, 4, 1. What did I do wrong? Oh, I did this. <laughs> Uh -huh. This is wrong right here. I have to subtract going from right to left. I was doing that in the wrong order right there. And today we're going to be doing some adding with things, so I have that in my mind right now. So I'm going to take 4 minus negative 1, which is 5. And I'm going to take 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. There we go. And that gives me vector v. So vector v, if I go to the right 5, and I go down to, and I connect this with the origin, you can see that vector V is the same size. It goes in the same direction as what the purple vector PQ goes. But this is called the position vector. The position vector means it starts at 0, 0. That is its initial point. We also found this with the two double lines on either side. What does that mean? Magnitude, magnitude right. And what's another word for magnitude? Length, right? So the length of the vector. So to find the length of the vector, I have to use the position vector. I square each of these. I get 25 plus 4, which is the square root of 29. So it's saying that the length of this is 29. Now let me just kind of throw this up here to make sure you understand what we just did. If I made a triangle with this vector right here, and this side was 5 and this side was 2, do you see how we just used Pythagorean theorem to find that length? That's all that is. And you know Pythagorean theorem, right? So don't see it as memorizing something new. It's something you actually already know. Okay. All right, next. Graph P, Q, and V to the right. We did that. Next, find a unit vector. Ooh, that was another new word from yesterday. Unit means one. So it means the length of our vector has to be one. It means we have to take one divided by the magnitude, which is the square root of 29, and we have to multiply it by our vector v. When we do, we end up getting the vector 5 over the square root of 29 and negative 2 over the square root of 29. Okay, that is a unit vector. Basically what it's doing is it's taking our vector v that is square root of 29 units long and it's finding a vector that goes in this same direction but it's little. It's only one unit long. Okay. Um, in order to be a vector. So these are points, but in order to be a vector, we use these different type of parentheses. Um, the points and parentheses. Yeah. That means component form. That's how you know, like, 
what form it's in. If it's a point you're looking at or if it's a component form, okay. it's by those parentheses. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. um, if you did, oh, so you're saying with the five rad 20, remember I'm in calculus all day long. Five rad 29 over 29 and negative two rad 29 over 29. I'm not sure how math excel if they take it or not. They take it either way. They take the square root. So which one did you want? <laughs> I'm okay with this one. You're at the end of the year. You're almost to calculus. So let's give it to you. Okay. All right, next. Calculate 2v plus w and v minus w. Well, what is w? Oh, there we go. So I'm like, I don't see W. There it is. There's W. Okay. So 2 times V means, okay, V is this guy right here, just this guy. And so 2 times that is going to be 10. 2 times that is negative 4. Plus 1, 2. Add the X's. Add the Y's. V minus W is taking v, which is 5, negative 2, and subtracting w, which is 1, 2. You could also see this as adding the opposite as long as you distribute that to both. Okay. So 5 and negative 1 is 4, and negative 2 and negative 2 is negative 4. So there are some adding and subtracting, multiplying with vectors, and then the final review, which we had talked about yesterday, was that IJ form. Okay. It says write the vector u, which vector u, okay, they're, we have to call it vector u is what it is, in the form ui plus u sub 2 j if the length of vector u is 4 and the angle is 120. So remember the form that we had that? It was R, here it was R, and then it was cosine theta I plus sine theta J. So here I'm taking the length of R, which is this four right here, and then cosine of 120 I plus sine of 120 J. Now, do I know cosine of 120? What is it? Yeah, did you say negative 1 half? Okay. And then rad 3 over 2. Yes, that was right. Okay, and then we can distribute the 4 right there. And once we distribute the 4 in that form, actually, you know what, I should not have this type of parenthesis right here. These are just regular parentheses in here. Because it's not a vector when you're writing it in that form. You can convert it to a vector, but... And you get negative 2i uh, plus 2 rad 3j. So here you have it in the exact form that they asked for it. Sometimes they want it in the r cosine i sine j form, in which case they would tell you that. But they did not have that in the directions for um, leaving it that in that form. Right. Now, as a vector, it's negative 2 and 2 rad 3. The vector doesn't have the i and the j in it. This is component form. So if they ask for something in component form, you can do that. Okay. So again, a lot of vocabulary words. Okay. Now, today we are continuing on. Section 7.5 talks about something called the dot product. There are actually two kinds of products. Product means multiply. There's two types of multiplication with vectors. The first is called a dot product, 
There's another one called a cross product. Okay, today we're only doing the dot product. So with a dot product, so I'm going to define the dot product of two vectors. You're going to find that the result is not a vector. Okay, it's just a number. I'm going to find the angle between two vectors. I'm going to define orthogonal vectors, so another vocabulary word there. Projection we won't get to till tomorrow, decomposing tomorrow, and um, the definition of work tomorrow. So we're doing the first three hopefully today. Okay. So your book says the dot product for two vectors, vector v and w, is where you take the v sub 1 and the v sub 2, you take the v sub 1 and the w sub 1 and you multiply them together. And you take the v sub 2 and the w sub 2 and you multiply those together. And then you add the result of that. So you take the first component in each one and multiply them, the second component in each one and multiply them, and then add that. So it's just light arithmetic on these, okay? People generally like dot products. So of course the best way to really learn it is to look at an example. So here we have vector v is the uh, vector 1, 2, and vector w is negative 2, 5. And so to find v times w, and it's just a little dot that's in between them, cross product is if it's v times w, like that times. We're not doing that today, okay? It's when there's a dot in between. That's how they differentiate between the two. So I'm going to take here the 1 times negative 2, and actually I don't want that vector sign. 1 times negative 2 and add 2 times 5. So negative 2 plus 10, which is 8. So V times W is equal to 8. Dot product is equal to 8. If it's not given to you in vector form, you need to take and change it into component form before you can move forward with it. So vector V here for this one is 4, negative 3. And vector w is negative 3, negative 4. v times w, dot product, take 4 times negative 3, which is negative 12. Take negative 3 times negative 4, which is positive 12, and add them together to get 0. So you're getting a number. That's easy enough, right? Questions so far? The dot product and the angle between two vectors is what this next piece is labeled. It's another way of finding a dot product if you don't know the uh, vectors themselves. What if you know the length of the vectors or the angle between the vectors? You can still find a dot product in that way as well. So here there are three separate formulas that are written right here, but they're all the same formula. Okay. Um, another way to find the dot product is if you know the length of them and you know the angle between them. Theta right here is the angle between the vectors. Now, out of fairness to you, you might not understand what I'm saying when I say the vector between two, two vectors. So let's say I have these two vectors right here that are making up an angle. It's talking about this angle that is between them. That's what theta is on this problem right here. It's not the angle that it's making with the x-axis or the bearing or anything like that. It's you physically have two vectors they might be different sizes, they might not, but it's whatever the angle is between them. Okay. So that's what this is referring to. Theta is between 0 and 180. It's the angle between two non-zero vectors, V and W. Okay. So we don't count this angle between them, like they have two angle. We always count the one that, like if you were going to make a little triangle with it, sort of thing. Okay.
Now, this one here is where you get cosine theta by itself by dividing both sides by these lengths. That gives you this formula. This formula would be used more if you maybe wanted to find the angle, but quite honestly, I use this one for that. Uh, but maybe you know the dot product and you know the lengths, you can take and plug them in and instead find what the angle is. And then, of course, to get theta by itself, you can take cosine inverse to both sides, and that's what this one is. So they're all the same formula. For years and years, like when I taught pre-calc many years ago, and the textbook that we used was before we had CCP pre-calc, um, the, the textbook only had this formula. So in my mind, this is the formula that I know, but your textbook shows it in different forms and asks questions so that you can use the different forms. Okay. So now it says, oh, if V and W are two vectors of magnitude 3 and 8, take notes on what you just read. Vector V, the length, is 3. Vector W, the length, is 8. Respectively means in the order that you have it. So the first one mentioned it goes with the first one, the second one mentioned goes with the second one. And the angle between them is 60 degrees. So theta is 60 degrees. It says find V times W. Well, that formula for V times W was to take the length of V times the length of W and multiply it by cosine of the angle. So here you're just popping it into that formula. V times W equals 3 times 8 times cosine of 60. What's cosine of 60? Okay, they're so funny. All your eyes go, hmm? <laughs> Uh-huh. One half. Oh. Right. Okay. So this is what 24 right there times one half would be 12. So the length of or not the length, the dot product is 12. Okay. So that's one way you could use the formula. Oh, but there's more. Find the angle between the vectors 2i minus 3j and 3i plus 5j and round your answer to the nearest tenth of 3. The last one said round to the nearest tenth, but we did not need to. Okay. So let's see. Vector v is 2i minus 3j or 2, negative 3. Right? I would need to find the length of that which is the square root of 4 plus 9 or the square root of 13. Vector W is 3i plus 5j or 3, 5. I would need to find the length of vector W, which is the square root of 9 plus 25 or the square root of 34. I'm just collecting evidence right now, basically. I'm collecting everything I need to plug into the formula. I also need the dot product. V times W, like so. Multiply the X's together, I get 6. Multiply the Y's together, I get negative 15. Add that result, I get negative 9. The formula for the cosine, or for the angle between two vectors is theta equals cosine inverse of the dot product divided by the length of vector v and the length of vector u, uh, w. So theta equals cosine inverse of negative 9 over rad 13 times rad 34. A calculator is definitely a must for finding that angle. Your calculator should be in degrees. That's generally how these answers are given. I mean, if they want to say radians, they have to say, but if they don't mention, it should be in degrees. So I have, oh, let me check. 
degrees. Okay. Second cosine. And then I have a fraction. It is in your best interest to use that fraction key or both of these won't end up in your denominator. If you just use a divide key like a slash for a divide. So I have a negative 9 on the top. And on the bottom I have a square root of 13 times 34. Aren't both of these under a square root? So you can keep them under the same square root in your calculator. Okay. And then enter. And it says the angle between them is 115.3461759. So now kind of take a look at those two vectors. 2, negative 3 is here. That's the first vector. 3, 5 is up here. It's that vector. This angle between them is 115 point, oh, we were supposed to do the nearest tenth, 115.3 degrees. Okay, so it's referring to this angle right here between them. That's what you just said. Okay, so you already knew how to find the lengths of each of these, so that's not new. The dot product is new, and that's not very hard. So then just remembering that formula right there. Okay. Now, there are some additional properties of dot product. First of all, it's commutative. It doesn't matter whether it's u times v or v times u, you're going to get the same answer. That is not the case when we do the cross product. Okay, u times v and v times u will be different. But dot product, they're the same. The other thing is, is it's distributive. So you could distribute, if you have a number multiplied out in front, um, you could distribute it to each one of them. Just like when we had a number, a scalar of two out front, you know we could distribute. If you ever have zero times a vector, it's gonna end up being zero. A lot of these like seem just very self-explanatory. This one here is one we're gonna use here in just a minute. It says if you have the vector multiplied by itself, that equals the magnitude of v squared. So it's not just v squared, it's the magnitude of v squared. Okay. And then this one right here is saying if you have c multiplied by u and then that's multiplied by v, you could change it around and have the C multiplied by the V instead of the U, or you could multiply the V and the U first and then multiply by the C. Like, it doesn't matter the order that you're multiplying these things. It's all that same. But the one there that's probably not as self-explanatory is this guy right here. Okay, so that's the one that, you know, you need to remember that. In fact, I'm going to write it down right here right now so I can refer back to it. The other thing I'm going to write down is that formula. I need the right letter. Which is from the previous slide before that. It says, let V and W be two vectors in a plane with magnitudes 20 and 12. All right, that means the length of vector V is 20 and the length of vector W is 12. The angle between V and W is 65 degrees. So theta is 65 degrees. Find the magnitude of V plus 2W. Find the magnitude of V plus 2W. Well, there's nothing that says that this is the absolute value of V, or not, I can't call it absolute value, but the, the magnitude of V plus 2 times the magnitude of W. We don't have a rule that says that. Okay. If we want to find this, there's a process that you actually have to go through. Okay, probably the toughest thing we're going to talk about today. 
And the process, like with this information right here, can't I find V times W? Everybody agree with that? I can find that. So the process is, because I don't have anything that says what I can do with that, I'm going to square it. Okay? And when I square something, that means in the end I'm going to have to take the square root to undo it. Okay? So later down here, I'm going to have to take the square root to undo what I did up there. All right? Now, when I have something squared, it means I can square what's on the inside. So if I take V plus 2W and multiply by V plus 2W, I think I'm going to run out of room on this. Isn't that V squared plus 4VW plus 4W squared? Everybody agree with that? Okay. So now, from that right there, V squared is the same thing as like V times V. And V times V was also the magnitude of V squared. So in place of that, I can put magnitude of V squared. Which means 20 squared. Because I do know the magnitude of V. Well, it doesn't mean it's just for the letter V. If I had W times W, wouldn't that also mean W squared or the magnitude of W squared? So I'm going to do the same thing here. I have 4 times W times W. But in place of the W times W, I'm going to say 4 times the length of W. And 4 times the length of W, the length of W is 2, oh, sorry, squared. Um, so it's 4 times 12 squared. Like I said, this is the hardest part because you're having to pull from these things right here. Now, in the middle, it says V times W. V times W can be found using this. The dot product can be found using this. So that's what I'm going to put in place of that dot product of V and W in the middle. Now the 4 is just going to stay out front there, but then that whole formula that I have right there, uh, I don't know if I can fit it in. Cosine theta. I'm going to squeeze it in there. Just let me like, can I move this over a little bit? Yes. All right, so this means four times the length of V, which is 20, the length of W, which is 12, and then cosine of 65. Now, all of this right here is inside, you know, that there. And so from there, I need to just kind of do the math. Um, let me see if I can just squish. That's enough room right there. Okay, where's my calculator? Um, 40 or 20 squared is 400 plus 4 times 20 times 12 cosine 65. Close my parentheses. Plus 4 times 12 squared. If I would remember. 1381.713. It keeps going. But remember how I squared it? I now have to take the square root of that to undo that. So second square root, second answer. And it comes out to 37 point, what decimal place did they want? Here's tenth, so two. So what I just found right there was the length of V plus 2W. 
again, that's the toughest thing for today because you're having to remember this guy right here and this guy right here. And on that, knowing that you have to square it and then take the square root of it. So if that length of multiple things is on the inside, like you can find vector v plus 2w if you had vector v and 2w, but you don't. You don't have those vectors. You were never given the vectors. If you had them, you'd be able to just take them, add them together, and then find the length of it. But you don't have those vectors to do that with. Okay? All right. Parallel vectors. Parallel vectors means they have the same slip. So these two vectors right here are parallel. These two vectors are parallel. The direction doesn't matter for parallel, just the angle matters, okay? So they occur when the angle between the vectors is either zero or 180 degrees. So 180 degrees would be like if I took one of these and put it at the end of the other one and you'd have a line, you know, that would make the 180 degrees. Orthogonal vectors, also known as perpendicular vectors. Orthogonal means perpendicular, so new vocabulary word. Occur when the angle between the vectors is 90 degrees or 270 degrees. So like you have a vector like this and then you have another one that's coming off like this. Okay, so this angle is 90, this angle is 270. That's why they're giving the two. Usually it's just 90 degrees. They're perpendicular here. But it means that cosine of theta equals zero. Think about your unit circle. Cosine of theta. Where's cosine zero? 90 and 270, right? So that makes sense. Two vectors, V and W, are orthogonal or perpendicular if their dot product equals zero. Okay, so that's another good one to know, if their dot product is zero. So if you multiply them together and you get zero, then that means they are perpendicular to each other. So it says, determine whether the following vectors are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. All right? So what I do when I'm looking at these, I first write them as vectors. If I can multiply this vector by a number that then ends up being this vector, that means they're parallel. So like, in order to change this number into this, I'd have to multiply it by negative two, right? If I multiply that by negative two, I get that. If I multiply that by negative two, do I get one? So it's not parallel, okay? To check if they're orthogonal or perpendicular, I take negative one times two plus negative two times one, the dot product which gives me negative two plus negative two, which is negative four. Wait, yeah, there we go. Is that zero? So that means they fall into this category, neither. So now I look at this one. I have four, eight, and two, negative one. If I multiply this number by one half, I get this number. If I multiply this by one half, do I get that number? No, so they're not parallel. Four times two plus eight times negative one is eight plus negative eight, which is zero. They're perpendicular because they're orthogonal. Okay. It says find the scalar k so that these two vectors are orthogonal. So this vector here is k negative 2, and this vector here is 4 6. Don't let the k threaten you in any way. You're just following the same pattern. Multiply the two first uh, components together. Multiply the second components together. Add them, and they want it to be orthogonal, saying it must come out to zero. Add 12 to both sides. Divide by 4, 
must be 3 in order to make that orthogonal. All right, and we pick up tomorrow with projection, which is exactly where I wanted to end today. So that is perfect.